Copyright disclaimer. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Bill. And today I'm here to follow up on a video I made a couple months back where I watched and ranked every episode of Bluey available to me in the US. Since then, some new episodes have dropped and uh, egg on my face, I thought there was gonna be more than 10, but here we are. And I've gotten some people asking me if I was gonna do a follow up. So here you go. <laughs> I'm gonna be ranking the 10 new episodes of season three of Bluey that dropped in the US in July of 2023. Let me know if you want me to do this again or do more in-depth videos about episodes of Bluey by liking, subscribing, commenting. Let me know what you think. Obviously these are just my feelings, my lens, my personality, my baggage. So let me know. Do you agree? Do you disagree? How would you order this? And despite there only being 10 episodes, this was really tricky for me. I had a great time doing it before. If you wanna hear my thoughts on the previous Bluey episodes, go check it out. Link in the description next to a card that'll send you to resources for social awareness, mental health, crisis lines, Trevor Project resources, things like that. Should you or someone you know need them? There will also be a link there to the Entertainment Community Fund if you wanna help support those who are striking right now. I'm not paid, sponsored, affiliated. I am not an influencer. This is all just me doing it. I don't receive money other than AdSense and and support from you. So thank you for clicking. You can also find my gaming channel in the description, Bill Chill Gaming, where I'm streaming Mondays and Thursdays. Also my merch store if you wanna pick up merch. Blah, 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 plug, plug, plug. Okay, I'll still be doing an emotional ranking like I did before, starting with things that made me feel nice and warm and then things that sent me down a further, more intense road. So yeah, let's get this started with number 10, Trades. Two workers, or trades show up to help the healers put in a new pond in their backyard. Bluey and Bingo initially see them as enemies. I guess no one told them to expect company for a couple of days. I really like the story of humanization. There's something about watching Bluey and Bingo kind of fall into this reality TV kind of moment. They're spying on the workers for a while. They start to learn little things of their lives. They found some things boring, like one worker talking about his boat. However, they started to instantly gravitate to their relationships, and it kind of made me think of, like, reality TV. And even Chili gets wrapped into the spying when there's gossip about one of the workers having a, a tricky time in his relationship. There was something about just seeing tattoos in this kind of show that I, I don't know, it, I really liked. I also like seeing how relationship troubles can kind of take away from other elements of your life. He's distracted at work, it's slowing things down. It even pulls him away from an ice cream cone, which the other worker, Tool Belt, shares with Bluey and Bingo. And they have a nice little moment talking about what they've observed in each other's lives. There's still a very heartfelt message about acts of kindness and the humanization and understanding of each other, learning things about each other. This one just made me feel nice and warm and fuzzy inside. Cherry and chocolate milk are fine, by the way. Also, I need to know if the pond in the backyard is canon. And coming at number nine is Puppets, or as I like to call it, Unicorse 2. The episode starts with Bluey and Bingo starting to learn a lesson about good manners and good hygiene, and who better to teach them than Unicorse, the person who will teach them everything wrong. I love the pivot to teaching Unicorse better manners, especially when it became a love story between Unicorse wanting to marry Chili, and it quickly moves from do it for romance to do it for yourself, just in time for Unicorse to gain some self-worth, self-value, and self-affirmation, to be told he's a puppet, and as Unicorse goes through the existential dread of being self-aware, we start to learn that not only is that okay, but this is an important learning tool. Bluey is also not real, and yet we all learn from Bluey. We pull out of the animation and we see the animation actually being made. I hope that hand got paid properly. I would never have guessed that Bandit was controlling Unicorse this whole time. I was blown away. Unicorse X Chili is the best ship of 2023. Next is Turtle Boy. Bingo, 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 bingo. Bingo and Bandit go to the park and Bingo finds a stuffed turtle left behind by somebody else. Bingo and Bandit play with the turtle. They're having fun, but no, we can't take him home. Its owner's probably looking for it and it's the right thing to do. And then we see another child. <laughs> I'm so stupid. I wrote, I wrote ASL, crossed it out because the A at ASL American Sign Language. And then I thought Australian Sign Language, that'd still be ASL. And then I fell down a bit of a rabbit hole. Another kid shows up who uses sign language and the same thing happens. Yes, we can play with the turtle. No, you can't take it home. What if their owners are looking for it? Eventually, after a couple of days, Bandit implies maybe you could take it home if another day goes by. Then Bingo hides the turtle. And then we see the other kid eventually find the turtle and also hide the turtle. Both of them hoping to take the turtle home, both coming clean and acknowledging not only was hiding it the wrong thing to do, but taking it home still isn't the right thing to do. There's something really heartwarming about Bingo and this other kid failing to do the right thing, owning up to it, learning and moving on without the turtle. I just, my note is just, bingo, no. <laughs> the next is the decider. Decider, I hardly. This is an interesting one for me. 
I'm not a very big sports person. However, I do understand and have been around other people who get weird about sports. There's a big football game going on and the healers are having the neighbors over except for the neighbor's wife who's rooting for the opposite team as the healers and the rest of her family. And not only do I not have a sports rivalry perspective here, but it was interesting seeing this impact it could have on a kid. And I feel like traditionally the story would end with, well, you'll just pick a team one day for yourself. Yay. But that's where this story starts. The neighbor's kid is still free to pick a side, mom's team or dad's team, purple or blue. There's a rivalry and yet it's not mean spirited. What's supposed to be something fun and entertaining is this polarizing thing in this family. And I liked the idea at the end, you know, well, here's an international league and we all vote for the same team because it's like our country's team. And then the joke, except Mackenzie and everyone, ha ha ha. And like, they're all ribbing and it's all in good fun. I wish I could relate more to the sports topic in general, but also the good natured element of it. I also really love that Bluey just loved the, the victory dancing, no matter who it was that received the victory. It does a good job at letting us know when we get carried away with our entertainment and start to treat it in this polarizing political fashion. I wish it had just touched on it more, but like, what are they gonna do? Set furniture on fire, which yes, has happened. <laughs> <laughs> near me it's scary still a heartwarming time still very funny when isolated in the setting of it's all in good fun and coming in at number six is musical statues a beautiful message of breaking us away from living for the weekend any day can be a day to take time for yourself everybody's feeling off let's have a dance party the music isn't working let's play everybody's favorite song i don't even remember who won the game of musical statues i just remember well can we just keep dancing and looking at the rules and realizing we make our own rules? Do the things that'll make you feel better. Do the things that find you joy when you can. Don't put off fun, especially when it's something tangible you can do today. I love the idea of not only it's okay to have a day, but also that day doesn't need to wait until it's convenient. If you're not having a good day, let's do something. We've now hit the point of not only does this make me feel happy inside, but it also made me feel pain. <laughs> in stories, we focus on Indy and Winston at Bluey's pre-K kindergarten class. It, Bl Bluey's class. They're making sculptures out of like Play-Doh or wax, beeswax. Indy sets out with the intention of sculpting a horse and everyone confuses it for a cow. And Indy resigns to never sculpting anything again. End of episode. Which is already a great gag. Winston's knocking around the letters of the credits. It's very fun. Calypso, their teacher, inspires Winston and Indy to work together and it's very indirect. Instead of make it look more like the thing you want, how do you want the story to end? Do you really want it to end with it? You never did this again? So they set out to do their research. They're looking at picture books. And while we're rewriting the story, Winston makes some uh, creative decisions of his own and wants muscles and he's shredding on the guitar and he can turn into a car and he's crying rainbows and he has rainbow magic powers. I love it so much. I love how Winston isn't really into the sculptures, but instead wants to make people laugh and starts to channel that energy into making Indy laugh, but also helping Indy figure out what to do. People don't see your horse. Well, how do we make it more visible? Let's work at it. Oh, they have a longer neck. Oh, too long, it's a giraffe. And now it's just right. Trying and trying and trying until you create something that other people understand and appreciate. I, I really felt that and I really needed that right now. Granny Mobile. Not the only redemption arc in this list, but Muffin's I wouldn't even call it a redemption arc. It's it's a place where Muffin's, uh, we've seen Muffin be loud. We've seen Muffin be selfish. Muffin is learning to play better with others. And I loved already seeing that. But here's where Muffin becomes the anti-hero we need. Muffin, Bluey, and Bingo are playing grannies at a yard sale. The woman who's running the yard sale is kind of being taken advantage of. Meanwhile, Muffin can't decide what kind of granny to be, decides on a grouchy granny, just in time for a real grouchy granny to show up, wanting to buy the rascal scooter that grouchy granny Muffin is riding in. And in an amazing turn of events that doesn't compromise character, Muffin out grouchy grannies the granny, who then pays four times what the rascal was originally selling for, initially wanting to undercut 100 for a $300 scooter, now paying $1,200. The appreciation that the yard sale lady had, and seeing how, yes, this kid's personality is difficult at times, seeing how it will also yield a strength later. Muffin will not be pushed around as an adult later in life, and it was, I don't know, something very lovely to see, and I was just super happy for Muffin. Also, if I were that granny, I wouldn't be such an ass if I had that much cash in my pocket. Now, these last three episodes, I openly wept. Coming in at number three, Dirt. 
Ooh, <laughs> oh, judo. And her mom, no, I'm not gonna apologize for what I said in my previous video. It needed to happen this way. We needed this understanding. I needed this understanding. Another renovation project is happening at the healer's home and Bluey and Bingo are playing in a mountain of dirt. Judah wants to join them. However, she just finished the painstaking process of getting her hair cleaned with her mom. Judo's mom, who I also will not be apologizing to, talks about how hard it is to maintain it, how important it is, and how it's kind of tied to the breed of dog they are. I'm sure that opens the gate for a lot of subtext and metaphor or analogy that I'm not really privy to. The point is still driven home that it's a long process to take care of Judo's hair and she should take pride in her appearance. However, Judo wants to go play in the dirt with Bluey and Bingo and is scared of getting dirty, taking her mom's words of affirmation and pride in one's appearance to heart. We even see Judo's mom struggling while she's cleaning around the house, like her hair's kind of getting in her eyes and stuff. Judo starts to get really upset. She doesn't want to get dirty. And Judo's mom is kind of surprised by this. No, 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 go play. It's important to have fun. It's up to you. Do you want to go play? Again, kind of like the decider, traditionally, this is where I'd expect the story to end. It's up to you. Haha, ha, I'll go play. Those words, this outlook on one's appearance and how important it is to Judo's mom is impacting Judo. To where Judo's mom, it's the, oh, it, it hit. And it hits so well. Judo's mom then decides, screw it, and starts to cut her own hair in front of Judo. And then cuts Judo's hair. So Judo doesn't have so much hair to deal with. Who cares? It'll grow back. There's going to be plenty of time to worry about whether or not you want long or short hair or whether or not you want it to get dirty. Go play. Go be a kid. And they're just so happy. And it just it's liberating for both of them. And I like this sort of recontextualization and deprogramming Judo's mom has to do for the benefit of her daughter. Judo clearly wants to play, but doesn't want to be a burden, doesn't want to be bothersome. Seeing that lesson in front of you and making a conscious change for the better, they're both going to have a better outlook on this in the future. I loved feeling that. And that's why it's my number three. Okay. And next we have onesies. This episode already has quite the reputation, and yet I still felt very underprepared going into this episode. I'm not mad, but nobody really sold me on how heavy this episode was going to be. Onesies centers around Chili's sister, Brandy, coming to visit, something she hasn't done in a very long time. And she shows up with presents for Bluey and Bingo. Onesies, a zebra and a cheetah one. Bluey wants the cheetah onesie, and it doesn't fit. The zebra one is too big for Bingo, and the cheetah one is too small for Bluey, despite cheetahs being Bluey's favorite animal. Bluey has to settle for the zebra, and Bingo gets the cheetah. The cheetah onesie literally transforms Bingo, and she starts to thirst for blood. And the whole family starts to play as Bingo fully embodies the cheetah onesie and becomes one with the onesie. Bluey, however, is really disappointed that she doesn't get to be a cheetah as well. Cheetah is her favorite animal. Brandy thought Bluey's favorite animal was a zebra. Well, yeah, four years ago. So it's been four years since Brandy came to visit. We've also noted how much Bluey looks like her dad and how much Bingo looks like Brandy. Now, I was expecting all kinds of things. I was waiting for uh, Bingo is adopted. I was prepared for Brandy is in love with Bandit. I remember everybody arguing whether or not that was Chili in the It Was the 80s episode, whether it was Chili or Brandy. I still think that was Chili. But I, my brain was going all over the place. Why does Bingo look like Brandy? Why is everything so awkward for Brandy? What's going on? What's going on? Turns out Brandy is incapable of having children. And being around Bluey and Bingo is really hard for Brandy. And we learned this through the metaphor of the onesies. And it's honestly, it's not only incredibly insightful, it also can just relate to other elements. The onesie is your body. Bluey having to learn to adapt to her onesie. Bingo gets to be a cheetah. Bingo knows what a cheetah does. And Bluey learns throughout the episode that there's benefits to being a zebra as well. And not only is it beautiful to have those moments where Bluey asks about Brandy, and we get this really tear-jerking moment where Brandy's playing with Bingo and having fun. Bingo runs off, and Brandy just kind of reaches for her, and she's kind of needing a minute. I love that Chili keeps checking in with Brandy just to see what's up. Chili's very aware of what's going on and just wants to check in, doesn't want to push it. And yes, there's more to this conversation. There's always adoption or fostering, but it's just the focus on still trying to be a part of the family while being around the kids is so hard for Brandy. And I love taking those moments. I loved it. When that shoe dropped, I was in awe that we're going to hit this topic. And I'm so glad, destigmatize the crap out of this. I really admire this episode, and that's why it's tied for my number one spot with space. The, <laughs> that's right, 
I tricked you again. Onesies and space are tied for my number one spot because I'm not going to pick between between discussions about one's emotional state in their body and one's emotional state in their mind. To me, these two episodes go hand in hand. Space is my favorite episode that Bluey is not a part of. And at first, I didn't know what to make of it. I wrote a lot of jokes about, haha, it's SpaceX. Aliens are real. Is that a UFO? Is that a UAP? Aliens are real jokes. Aliens are real jokes. And then the reality hit. Originally, the plan is to go to Mars and look for life. Mackenzie, however, hears about a black hole and is suddenly very interested in that concept. Suddenly, Mackenzie's storyline in their playtime is very isolating. I'll go off on my own. Oh, the cord snapped. And eventually, Mackenzie makes it to the black hole. And when we go through it, suddenly it's a slide. And Mackenzie comes out the other end a puppy, scared, because Mackenzie's mom is nowhere to be seen. And Mackenzie is convinced that she's gone. Mackenzie is then greeted by Calypso, who says, You know what's here now. You don't need to come back here. Everyone's helping Mackenzie go back through the black hole. You're tied to a string. We're pulling the string like rope. And I realize space is in outer space. Space is in safe space. A safe space for Mackenzie to respond and grapple with and confront a trauma. And even though, and this is so important, and even though the reality was Mackenzie's mom was not far away, the slide just happened to spit Mackenzie out in a direction where you couldn't see the mom anymore that didn't make it any less impactful. And while yes, there's a lot of childhood trauma that will be more direct touching on it in this less aggressive fashion, not only opens the conversation further, but also I think gives a show like Bluey the opportunity to talk about this without, you know, marks on your arm or something like that. And as someone who's gone through both ends of the spectrum, I really appreciate how this was handled. And I loved seeing how Mackenzie's friends were so confused. And even Mackenzie was confused. Mackenzie doesn't know what's going on. There's something so subtle about this episode and so disarming. And it it needs to be that way. I immediately had to rewatch this episode because I'm like, I'm digging something really dark and deep here. I need to see this again. It just delves so deep into this concept without like talking down or fluffing it up. It's no fault at all that like these other children didn't know what to do. And like I said, I think that's the point. Like you're not always going to know what's going on. The person experiencing it isn't always going to know what's going on. Mackenzie is just kind of drawn to this black hole. And then upon having that moment and that revelation, Mackenzie returns to the ship and is ready to keep going. And that doesn't make the experience suddenly gone. It just feels like it's manageable. Like it's it's more defined. I absolutely loved it. I can't pick between space or onesies. So they're they're tied. They both get to join the ranks of Sleepy Time as my favorite Bluey episodes. I adore and treasure both of these episodes so much. I didn't see anybody talk about space. So I, I think also going in just like so ill prepared. I, I genuinely, okay, onesies done. The sad one is done. Nope. <laughs> And it was honestly beautiful, and that's why these two are my favorites. I still loved all these episodes. I like ranking them this way on, like, an emotional lens. Nothing is better, nothing is worse. Sometimes I want the the happy, silly, heartwarming ones. Sometimes I want the sad ones. I hope this made sense and contextualized that for you, and I'd love to know your guys' thoughts in the comments. Um, but yeah, ironically, now, because of how I formatted this, I have to recover from a sad note. There you guys go. Those are my thoughts on the new episodes of Bluey Season 3 that dropped in the U.S., I'd love to know your guys' thoughts. I'd love to know your guys' takes in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video if you did. Subscribe if you want more. Ring the bell. Check the settings. Set them to all. Blah, blah, blah. YouTube words. My merch store is in the description. My gaming channel is in the description where I stream twice a week. Build Chill Gaming. There's also a link there to a card. They'll send you to resources for social awareness, mental health, crisis lines, Trevor Project resources, things like that. Should you or someone you know need them. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope to see you next time I upload or go live. Hope everyone's staying safe. Wear a mask if you go out. Be mindful of others. And remember to take care of yourselves, please.